Hello, welcome along to the uh, next in the series of videos where we are again setting up uh, Chocolatey in the organization. Now in the last three videos we have set about installing the uh, Chocolatey Central Management database, the Chocolate Central Management service and the Chocolate Central Management website. Now we went through the process, uh, we've got it all configured and we've got it set up but at the minute we currently have no machines uh, checking into uh, central management so we're not getting any of that uh, rich information about what machines we have in our environment, what packages they have installed, what packages might be outdated. We're not getting any of that information yet so we want to make sure that we start having those machines checking into uh, CCM. And that's what this video is going to be all about. So let's just jump straight in. Um, <clears throat> there is documentation for this uh, particular setup again, so I'd encourage you to read through it. Um, there's not a lot to it, but there's a couple of uh, caveats, so we'll just go through them. But essentially what we want to do, let's maybe just make this a little bit bigger, just zoom in a smidge. Okay, so what we need to do is we, the first thing that we need to do is we need to install Chocolate Agent. Now, uh, Chocolate Agent is the uh, Windows service that is utilized by Chocolate uh, for business when we're doing uh, self-service installations, but it also doubles up as an agent that will report back into CCM for us. Now, I'm here on my Chocolate client machine. So this is one that we did in a previous, this is a, a machine that we used in a previous uh, video where we used a uh, client setup.ps1 file to um, install Chocolate on this machine from our internal Nexus repository. And one of the things that it installed was the Chocolate agent. So it should already be installed here, but let's just verify that. So yes, we've got Chocolate agent installed. So we don't need to do uh, the first step on here because we've already done it. Okay. The important bit here is the uh, configuration changes that need to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that because we're going to need to tweak it slightly. But if I open up uh, a notepad here and then we can start looking at this and start playing with it. So let's zoom in just a little bit so that uh, it comes through on the video. If you've been following along with this, uh, the default uh, text editor on this machine by default is notepad it's restrictive but it's one of the first things that i'm going to fix once we have ccm deployments in play i'm going to put uh, either notepad plus plus or vs code onto all of these machines so that uh, going forward i won't be restricted to just using notepad um, so what we're doing here is we are running a chocolate config command to set this uh, central management service URL. So uh, we spoke about this in the uh, CCM service video, but effectively what this is, is this is the uh, a URL to the fully qualified domain name of the CCM service machine. Now, because I'm running in a uh, work group environment, uh, not in active, any sort of active directory, uh, the CCM service machine is just called CCM service. Okay, there's no um, there's no fully qualified domain name to go with it. Um, so literally in here, I should be able to go CCM service. And I chose to use the uh, default port number, which is 24020. And this part at the end is uh, default to chocolate management service. So if you haven't changed that, there's no need to change that here. The next one here is to enable a feature. So um, by default, when you do an installation of Chocolate Agent, it's not opted into uh, Chocolate Central Management. You have to opt into that, and that's done via this feature flag here. So it's a Chocolate feature enable name, uh, use Chocolate Central Management. And the final one here is if you want it to enroll into CCM deployments, then there's a, a second standalone feature, which is to use uh, Chocolate Central Management deployments. Now, you can have machines reporting into CCM, but you can, they're, they're excluded from uh, any sort of deployments happening to those machines. So uh, in order to get the, the most benefit from CCM, uh, both of these features would need to be enabled. So I'm going to do that on this machine because um, I want to take advantage of all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go down to my uh, PowerShell window here and I'm going to paste this in. I thought I pasted it in. I might not have pasted it. Copy, paste, there we go. Okay, so uh, the way that uh, Chocolate Agent works, having changed those configuration values, 
we shouldn't need to restart the service and it should just immediately start reporting into CCM. But that's one of the things that we probably need to verify. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the documentation to make sure that we finish going through that. There are other configuration settings that you can uh, play with if you need to. So the uh, interval for a machine checking into uh, CCM, you can uh, change that. The default is, uh, I think it was uh, amount of time in seconds. I think that's 30 minutes, I think. But having set the configuration, it should have immediately reported in. And then there are some timeout settings in terms of how long uh, an active connection will attempt to, or will wait before it will say something's wrong. Uh, there are settings in terms of this maximum size of uh, the message that can be exchanged between chocolate agent on this machine and the CCM service. Uh, so there's various things that you need to do. These two last ones are important. If you are in a environment where you are exposing your CCM instance to the uh, to the public internet without using a VPN. If you're doing that, then we recommend that you add in some additional uh, salt additive into your password. So these are things that um, will help ensure that there's uh, uh, there's no man in the middle type attacks in terms of uh, people reporting into uh, your publicly available CCM when they're not meant to. If they don't have this additional piece of information, then it won't be able to establish that trust relationship between the machines um, and it will be prevented from checking in. So if you are in that scenario, uh, I would encourage you to reach out to support and we can walk you through that process in a bit more detail. But there's uh, there again, there's information here in the, um, uh, the documentation that you should read in the first instance and then reach out to support if you're still having issues. <coughs> so having done all of those things, we can now look to verify that things are working. So it says open the services snap in and make sure that it's in a started state. So let's do that. So we've got the services.msc and in here we should have a uh, chocolatey agent and it should be running. So that's good. Uh, we then look at the log file, which is located in the lib folder. So in here, uh, program data, not quite the lib folder, sorry, the chocolatey folder. And then under logs, we've got the chocolatey agent. So in here, if we scroll down at the bottom, we don't have any obvious uh, error messages. So that's good. And looking at the log, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing my, my eyes immediately drawn to this part, which is the CCM certificate installation successful. The first thing that chocolate agent does when it attempts to report into CCM is it first establishes that trust relationship using that SSL certificate. And if it can't do that, um, there'll be error messages at this point in the log. So that looks like it's good to me. And then this part here is also it reporting information into CCM on our behalf. So I think we're good to go, but we'll finish going through the uh, verification at this point. So uh, open the service log and there should be messages about the CCM certificate, which we looked at and then also reporting. So if we go, we'll, we'll just do it from this machine actually. So if we go into HTTP colon uh, CCM web, <coughs> then we should be able to log in here with the, the, the default username, username is CCM admin and the password that we changed in the previous video. Um, Oh no, I see what I did wrong. I haven't called it admin. So CCM admin and the password I did type correctly. It was the username. Okay, so we've now got a machine that is reporting into CCM. So on this machine, it's telling me, or because there's only one machine, so I've got currently one out of 35, uh, it's telling me that there are eight installed packages and one of them is outdated. So this is where the flow of that information into CCM is really, really important because we get immediate information about uh, packages that are out of date. So if those packages happen to have uh, a CVE associated with them, then we're in a unique position where we can say, let's remediate that straight away by uh, getting that updated via a deployment. So. If we drill down this in a little bit, so we now get a list of computers. So there's currently only one, and that is our Choco client machine. We get information about uh, the IP address associated with that machine and when it last checked into uh, CCM. So these will be, um, so the dates 
so um, the the dates are localized to the client machine. So if I look at my machine just now, if I look at my user, sorry, then I am currently set up to use UTC, okay? These machines are not in UTC. These machines are in some other time zone, I think. Yeah, these are in Pacific time. So that's why we're seeing a difference between the last check-in time, which is currently saying uh, 2027 UTC, and 1.32 p.m. So that's where that discrepancy is coming in. So um, it's not an error. Uh, it's just that this time is being localized to the, the current time zone of the currently logged in user, okay? Now, if I drill down into that chocolate client, I'll then see what packages are installed on this machine. So if I, as a sanity check, I can go over here and do choco list uh, local only. So what we'll see here is that we have a total of eight packages and that's what is being reported in CCM as well. <clears throat> but the difference here is that it's also told us that this package is out of date based on what packages are available. So the reason it's telling us that is because if we go back to uh, our workstation machine, which is this one, and we look in our production repository, then an available package version for Chocolatey GUI is available as 07.17.2. Uh, and the currently installed version on this client machine is 0.17.1. So we're now in a position where we could um, remediate that through a CCM deployment. So that's what this tab up here is all about. And we could create a deployment to update that uh, package on all the machines so it's currently outdated. But currently we only have a single machine enrolling into um, CCM, but we can run that exact same three commands on each of those machines. And all of the machines would then begin reporting in. But uh, for future uh, enrollments, what we would really want to do, if we go back to our workstation machine, which is here, um, we created a, where did we create that? Was that in here? No, it was in Choco Setup Files. If you're one of the uh, previous uh, videos, we had, a client setup.ps1 file. So if we open that up again in here, we had a client setup file, which did all of the installation and configuration of packages that we wanted. So what we should really do for future machines is when we uh, do that client setup.ps1 file to install chocolate and install the packages that we need, we should actually take the, um, we should take this, so if I copy this, we should add this into our uh, client setup script. So going forward, <clears throat> any machines that we do a fresh installation of chocolate on will automatically be configured to uh, check into a CCM and be available for deployments. So I'm gonna save that down and I'll upload that into um, Sonatype Nexus, um, just, we've already done that in a previous video, so there's no point in doing that here, but I'll re-upload that client setup.ps1 file into uh, Nexus server. So then when we enroll multiple, uh, another machine, that will immediately start reporting into CCM for us. <clears throat> so in the next video, we will look at doing a CCM deployment uh, to update, at the very least, we'll update our chocolate GUI package and we'll look at installing uh, at least one other package. So as I mentioned, Notepad is uh, a great application, but um, missing some fundamental features. Uh, so what I would like to be able to do is um, uh, install uh, Notepad++ say, and we'll install that onto each of the machines. So that'll be in the next video. Uh, comments. Uh, down there. If you've got any comments, questions, feel free to ask uh, or uh, reach out on Twitter and I'll attempt to answer them there. But for now, thank you very much.